Now, when it comes to dupa, some people online claim that it's due to prolactin levels. Now, I couldn't find any particular basis for this personally, but if anyone in the comments cares to offer some insights, you're welcome to do so. Because overall, prolactin in regards to androgenetic alopecia, there isn't that much solid literature that exists with it, like it does with DHT in regards to androgenetic alopecia. In the study titled, quote, human scalp hair follicles are both a target and a source of prolactin, which serves as an autocrine and or paracrine promoter of apoptosis driven hair follicle regression, unquote. Sorry, I had to say the whole title. So, you know, you guys can go find it. That's such a long title. They need to shorten these titles. Like I've seen scientific studies with like paragraph long titles. But anyway, uh, this study is by Kirsten Foitzker et al. And the researchers delve into the intriguing role of the hormone prolactin on hair growth and its regression. Prolactin is predominantly known for its roles in lactation and reproduction, but it also impacts other systems like immunity, angiogenesis, which is the creation of new blood vessels, and also hair growth. Their study revealed that both human skin and scalp hair follicles produce and respond to prolactin, notably during the hair follicles transition from its growth phase to the regression phase, there's a noticeable increase in prolactin production. When hair follicles were exposed to high prolactin doses in a controlled lab setting, hair growth was hindered, leading to an early onset of the regression phase. So pretty much the shedding phase telogen occurred earlier. In the research, human scalp tissue was subjected to an extremely high dose of prolactin, about 400 nanograms per milliliter, in an organ culture setting. For reference, the typical prolactin levels are less than 20 nanograms per milliliter in men and less than 25 nanograms per milliliter in non-pregnant women and range from about 80 to 400 nanograms per milliliter in pregnant women. This significant exposure to prolactin led to marked changes in hair growth dynamics such that the hair actually shrunk. The hair shafts showed a reduced elongation and a larger number of hairs entered the catagen phase ahead of time. During this phase, the hair detaches from its nutrient supply and stops growing. The study also identified an uptick in apoptosis, and this is the natural cell death process, specifically in the hair bulb keratinocytes, which are protective skin cells. This phenomenon can be a precursor to hair loss. And this is occurring in vitro? not in vivo, so it's happening inside of a petri dish outside of the human body. But still, its mechanism of action is quite significant, especially since elevated prolactin levels in humans are linked to specific patterns of hair loss. Thus, prolactin's inhibitory effect on hair growth might be a key factor behind hair loss in individuals with hyperprolactinemia, a condition where the body produces too much prolactin. In essence, while prolactin plays a pivotal role in several physiological functions, it could also be responsible for hair follicle regression. This discovery could potentially set the stage for new therapeutic avenues in treating hair-related disorders. And I will touch on this just quickly at the end of this video, but we have HMI-115, which is currently being developed by Hope Medicine. But I'll touch on that towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Now, women tend to have hair loss related issues that are correlated with higher prolactin levels. And for that reason, the diffuse pattern seen in female pattern hair loss is often exhibited and related to by some people to the diffuse unpattern alopecia. We have a literature review titled, quote, hair loss and hyperprolactinemia, unquote, by Gerhard Lutz. Lutz explores the relationship between elevated prolactin levels and diffuse hair loss in women. Within this review, several key points come to light. The review acknowledges the scarcity of literature in the past 30 years on this topic. Despite the ongoing discussion regarding a potential causative link between prolactin and hair loss, Lutz distinguishes between two main types of hair loss in women, androgenetic alopecia, which is linked to genetic inheritance of hormonal imbalances and just, you know, the whole typical sensitivity to DHT, and also diffuse hair loss which presents a more complex clinical challenge due to its diverse potential causes, 
including dermatological and internal diseases, endocrine disorders, nutrient deficiencies, medication side effects, and also cosmetic procedures. Regarding prolactin levels, the review presents data showing a wide range of values in women with diffuse hair loss. While some patients exhibited significantly elevated prolactin levels, others showed only moderate or slightly increased levels. The review also notes that certain patients received medications to reduce their prolactin levels. Additionally, the review emphasizes the significance of assessing thyroid function and signs of androgenization in these patients. Lutz reports that most individuals had normal thyroid functions and lacked clinical evidence of androgenization, suggesting that androgenetic hormonal abnormalities may occur only in more severe endocrine disorders. Finally, the review underscores the importance of evaluating clinical relevance of elevated prolactin levels in female patients with hair loss, mentioning cases where patients had varying prolactin levels and possibilities of prolactinoma, which essentially is a benign tumor in the pituitary gland that induces the excess production of prolactin and other hormones. So in the case of female hair loss, prolactin levels aren't always the issue here, but they could be a contributing factor. But at the end of the day, like this kind of makes sense. It could just be androgenetic alopecia because androgenetic alopecia is the most common form of hair loss in both men and women. So in reality, the likelihood that diffuse unpatterned alopecia is due to prolactin levels is relatively low, especially for men. But again, get blood work because that is important. Because let's assume you have high prolactin levels as a guy. It would probably be worth addressing that, you know, the implications could be something that's not serious. So you don't want to find out that you have a tumor on your pituitary gland and it just got worse because you never addressed it when in reality you could have got blood work done and then you would have ca caught the tumor in a benign state in your pituitary gland and that could have been removed so if you are losing your hair as a dude or as a non-pregnant woman and then you go and get blood work done and you realize your prolactin levels are through the roof right then that's a first step to check not just on your hair follicles right but actually get a scan and look at what's going on in your head at your pituitary gland so we can rule out something like cancer or a tumor right that's that's actually leading to your demise so check that first get blood work done that's always the first step i encourage that regardless if you have androgenetic alopecia or not get blood work done but I see a lot of people online who are just attributing their hair loss with no blood work, right, to their prolactin levels. Now, can you feel your prolactin levels being too high, guys? Like, how the hell can you tell without getting blood work? Again, get the fucking blood work and stop saying, my prolactin levels are high. You don't know for sure, so stop making that uh, assumption. So, and, I, and this tends to be from people who are anti-finasteride, from what I've seen, um, but... Yeah, get that shit checked. So is there a basis of DUPA being related to high prolactin levels? I find it possible, but I don't see it being the primary cause based on high prolactin levels. There could be some sort of complex relation between prolactin and DHT such that in tissues, DHT may upregulate the expression of prolactin. Thus, this would become a downstream effect of DHT where suddenly in the tissues, prolactin levels are higher than in serum. And in this case, again, I'm largely spitballing here, so don't kill me if in 10 years you find out that it's contrary. Because we're working with sparse research when it comes to hair loss and prolactin, prolactin damage could be a downstream effect of DHT's interaction with the androgen receptor, and thus, prolactin being a co-regulator contributing to male pattern baldness. But again, in any case, DHT is the catalyst that starts all of this shit to begin with. Well, I guess 5-alpha reductase, if we're going to be, you know, nitpicky, 5-alpha reductase turning testosterone into DHT. Or maybe also your parents for, you know, having shit genetics that also causes you to go bald. Maybe you should have never been born to begin with. Nah, I'm joking, I'm joking. Just a little bit of dry humor there. Are, are you still listening? Did that catch you off guard? Did it? Anyway, let's keep going. 